This is my Benton action figure collection. It's pretty big, not the biggest, but I'm pretty proud of it. And here are some of the Benton custom figures I've made, including forearms, diamond head, Ben, and actually the entire UAF tri uh, trio. And I figured since I'm still working on Twilight World on Earth, I can leave you guys without any content. So I will now compare two of the most active customizers of Ben 10 figures uh, that I've seen on YouTube, just to see the differences in how they work and their final results. So the two YouTubers that I'm going to be talking about today are Crafty Gecko, who is from what I gather a British uh, action figure customizer, who basically makes customizing kits for Marvel Legends and other brands of figures. And I, I really enjoy his work because it's so well made, so finessed, and you can even see that there's engineering behind it, which really speaks to me, as I also have a bit of engineering study. The other YouTuber that we're looking at is Dino Plastic. Dino Plastic is, I believe, a Mexican YouTuber, uh, or at least Spanish-speaking YouTuber. Now, I speak un poquito español, but not as much as him. I can still piece out what's happening in the video, so because they're videos. Now his method is much more budget focused. He uses a lot of bootleg parts, especially for this, uh, these Benton customs, and some really interesting methods. But I still like his style, and I really resonate with him on the budget uh, idea. So first I'm going to look at both of their hit blasts. Both of their hit best action figures to compare how they would both tackle the same idea, and then I'm going to show you uh, what I believe is their most impressive work. Starting with Crafty Gecko, of course, he uses a very common recipe for the, uh, his hit best. This is the Sunfire Body Mold, which is good because it's yellow and it's translucent and it has a lot of fire, which you want with the uh, hit blast because you know, hit blast. Now you can see here he's removed the forearms. This is going to come in later, because uh, as I said, he makes kits. What exactly is a kit? You'll see in a moment. And now Not he's using one. varnish to take the black parts off. I've muted his video so that I can talk over it, because I'm doing my video. But uh, you can see it comes off cleanly, he even explains how to use acetone so that it does not damage the plastic. Um, he's actually a great explainer. I really understand what he's doing from what's, what he's saying, so he's good at that. Of course, it helps that we both speak English. And here you can also see he's taken the mask off of uh, the sunfire, sunfire head to use this as a base for heat blast, which is a good idea, because it's already flaming. And now this, this is exactly what I was talking about with kids. He uses CAD. I don't know which version of CAD. I believe he says in one of the videos, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But you can see he actually designs, this is actually how you design something in engineering, he designs the forearm replacement and the hands, which you can see have pegs, so they can rotate, there's articulation involved. He then refines them in Blender, and you can already tell it looks a lot more like he does. He then prints them using this clear resin, and it's just perfect. The articulation works, it's not too loose, it's not too tight. It's good. And what I like most about using clear resin, like he does, is the result. Because look, it's yellow translucent. Just awesome. And you can see here he uses Millipot, the terracotta color. Uh, it's good that he puts the actual resources he uses on the screen. This is very helpful and it's something that you're going to see with Lino Plastic. He doesn't. Which can be a little, a little bit off-putting. He also shows how he how's, how he's sculpting the hit blast head, um, and it looks quite good. He's a talented sculptor. In case he had any doubts, but uh, he shouldn't have, because he's good. Now, what happens next is something interesting that um, is going to relate to you know plastic later, because um, he shows in the video uh, that he's using Loctite as the glue and uh, you'll see here in a moment that he has some issues sticking the Omnitrix symbol on. Now Loctite I've heard about, I haven't used it personally, but I have also I also have experience with super glue where it doesn't 
super glue. You know, it doesn't glue at all. Now it might be to the materials, to the a lot of factors, but still it's super glue and it, it just came right off. Let's skip to the uh, final result now. There it is. You can see how well the translucent yellow works. Of course, it's more translucent on the arms, but the rest of the body has been attacked with millipot and acetone. But it looks great. It, this is how Marvel Legends would do a hit blast. Well, this is what Marvel Legends would do a hit blast if it was a Hasbro Pulse ex exclusive. Because it looks a bit too good, you know? It's a bit too three dimensional. But this looks good. It looks uh, realistic, doesn't really have the proportions of the show, but it's good. It's This is what I would like. I actually want this too much. Crafty Gecko, are you, are you selling? Like, wholesale figures? Are, are you? Right. Now on to Dino Plastics video. Wait, just stop. No hablo. He speaks Spanish, of course. I I could try to translate everything he said, but I just won't because I'm lazy. Uh, let's go to his steps of the figure. Here we go. First thing you're going to see, those are the arms and legs from the Bandai Hitless Lantern figure gimmicky thing, which I had as a child. So when I saw this on my screen, when I first watched this uh, video, I was like, wow. I'm going to put something funny there. Uh, but yeah, this is great because that figure was actually pretty decently scaled. If you want Hitler's a bit taller. And it had good articulation, especially for the time. It's still good now, although some joints could be better, but it's still good now. However, you can also notice other things. These two in particular are the most visible. Uh, those are bootleg parts from whatever. From whatever. The Mexican bootleg action figure market is booming for some reason because I see him and a few others just find the most amazing figures, counterfeit figures and they are perfect for customs, perfectly sized the only thing they're missing is articulation and good paint Where can I find those? I, I want those You can actually see there the entire figure so yeah, it's missing, it's missing articulation and good paint because that is green. And here you can see the body that he's using as a base. Um, whatever this is, I actually have no idea who this character is, and I'm not bothered enough to I'm not bothered enough to search. Now here he's showing how he wants to reduce the leg size, make it more uh, scale accurate, which is good. But then, oh boy. Do you see how how much far out, how far out that plate goes? Now I don't know about you, but I've used cutters or box cutters, as I've heard they're called. Um, I've used them before. They snap really easily. Their blades just snap at the slight of, slightest of inconveniences. I've never seen a blade of his snap, and he always does this. He has some of the most unconventional method, methods of using things or just some of the most unconventional things in general and he makes them work. That might not be big engineering but that's some engineering and you can see it actually cuts a bit hard but the plastic they used for this was actually hard plastic not the rubber that Hasbro uses right now and you can see there, there that they fit quite well actually with the hips. Now, you might notice um, they are not coming off. Why are they not coming up off? They are glued with what I will call the Dinoplastic Magic Super Glue. DPMSG for short. It just rolls off the tongue. Um, he has a super glue that I never seen. Has a very long pipe. Is that how you call it? Pipe? And just works in mysterious ways. Here's the size comparison next to Andrew Garfield Spider-Man uh, so they're about the same height and also Spider-Man with an Omnitrix. I actually never noticed that and now you can see he's drilling holes in the actual arms because they are well articulated they have double jointed elbows and he makes the holes so that they can peg into the 
shoulder. That's, that's great. Now he has both uh, bicep rotation, double jointed elbows, of course the shoulder joint and this figure even has a butterfly joint that I just can't get on screen. There, there is it. I don't know how good it is. I don't know what body mold this is, but it has a butterfly joint. Okay, now he's cutting the arms to make, him, make them shorter. And there, I want you to notice right now, these are not glued. There's barely any contact, between, where there's a lot of contact between them, which is actually the issue because there is no space here. There's, there's a little gap there, but I know for sure my super glue won't get in there. Here you can say that he's supporting with his finger, but here comes the pipe. This is an extension on an actual pipe. And if you watch closely here, this area here, I want you to comment the millisecond that the glue comes out. Cause I haven't seen any. There's no glue coming out of there, right? I haven't seen any glue and it's perfectly good in there. This is something that happens in each of his videos. It's driving me nuts. What is that super glue? Where do I get that super glue? I want that super glue. Also, uh, the brand of epoxy he uses. Uh, I don't know how it's called. I don't know what it's called. He, it's really easy to work with, it seems, because it doesn't uh, leave marks on your fingers. Like my epoxy just makes my hands dirty and sticky. And he can smear it until perfection. If I do that, uh, there's no more epoxy on the figure. It's all on my fingers. Uh, I have no idea what brand it is, but I want it. I want like a ton of it. The only thing he says is Plastilina Epoxica. That's not a brand. That's the translation for epoxy putty. Uh, and here we go again with the glue. The color from the bootleg just rests it on there. Yeah, it's not even snug, a snug fit. You can tell that. And yet, uh, in a moment, here comes the super glue again. Yeah, here comes the super glue. I don't see anything come out. It is. It, it's on there. It's stuck on there. It's perfect. This is the only common point. They both use the Sunfire head, because as he says here, the Sunfire head actually has a chin. This, this, this ain't got no chin. It's actually pretty much just a cylinder with texture. Now he's going on the Omnitrix again using magic. Um, he actually ended up using a 3D printed head, uh, did the sculpting, did some primer. I'm going to say some primer because that's not primer. You can see here it's not everywhere it's not even i don't even think you can count it as a good layer because you can see specks it's like a galaxy in there and it's somehow his paint sticks uh, on well even in thick layers doesn't rub off dino plastic what's your secret i mean you can see here that his paint goes on well and also what happened to this poor brush that that's the entire tip well, what have you done dino plastic what is that? I might donate you some money to buy a new brush because that's just tragic. My god. But yeah, here he is ready to assemble the final result. You can already tell it looks great. It looks extremely screen accurate. I mean, look, that's heat dust. That's uh, with the proportions from the show because he used uh, parts from an, action, uh, an official action figure. Um, which one would I choose? I would still choose crafty geckos it's just more of my style but this is great this is great and it's probably the method I would use because it's cheaper I mean <laughs> crafty gecko 3d printed using clear resin that's expensive enough I don't condemn it from doing it though it came out great but this is just as fine in my opinion now for what I believe to be the most impressive uh, figure they've done. I can't really choose one for Dino Plastic because he doesn't really come out of his comfort zone much. But I will choose, I will show my favorite uh, in a way Diamond Head. Um, and this is interesting because the body mold looks a lot like the 4 inch figure that Bandai released and that I have. 
suspiciously close to that, but it's it's big. I mean, it's not it's not four inches. That looks like six inches. And more importantly, it's translucent. Why why couldn't why couldn't Bandai do that? But yeah, this is another one of uh, the bootleg Benton figures. Where do people find these? They are amazing. You can see here that he's is a symbol body and he's only reattaching the chest part um, with super glue, with magic super glue, of course. Just how? That's probably the biggest biggest mystery of my life. But he will show in a moment that yeah, this is the movie Venom figure from Marvel Legends, and he is going to be using the bottom part to make Diamond Head. And that's great because it's black, so no risk of paint rub. It's well articulated. I mean, yeah, it's it's this cap crunch, not the inverse diaphragm that uh, Japanese companies use, but it's fine. The toes are not something Diamond Head has, but they can be fixed. And you can see here how he's got it more both on the Diamond Head body and on the Venom body to make it fit. And it looks pretty decent. The fitment looks okay. And this is another thing. You see this? This is a nail file. Do you know how soft those things are? I use uh, sandpaper and uh, now a Dremel for my customs. And even then it takes quite a bit of effort to take everything off. I've used these in the past. These nail files. I think in this shape exactly. It, it, it takes so much effort that I would actually have to take breaks, actual long breaks, because my uh, hands would cramp from the effort of holding them and pressing against the figure. But he seems to be using this every video with no issue. This is another uh, case of dinoplastic magic. How do you do it? How, how do you do it? You can see there, it works perfectly. I am amazed. And now here he is uh, cutting the feet off to adjust for scale. And he, uh, here he goes again with the super glue. I, I, I still don't see any glue coming out. Maybe I'm just stupid, but there's not any glue there. You can even see that he sculpted the body muscles to be more squarey, diamondy, rectangly, whatever you want to call them. But uh, he did it, and it looks really good and now he's showing how he's going to add articulation to the original arms because the original arms did not have articulation except for shoulders I mean he's showing good a plan I think that's a movie Batman figure like the small three and three quarter inch ones but he's basically just reverse engineering this whole thing or forward engineering some sort of engineering but uh, the arms are beautiful that's a very nice shade of translucent green and there's also these uh, from lego bionicle as he's showing and of course bootleg lego bionicle why not of course it exists but here you can see how they actually connect and this is a thing i used to do when i was little and i wanted uh, a figure of spider-man but i couldn't find many stores so i built a, re a lego bionicle and just sculpted it using play-doh all over it to make it look like Spider-Man. It looked like, wait, how do I say this family friendly? It looked bad, um, but it worked. It had articulation. These are great, especially if you get good ones because they're th they're tight. Uh, you can't get ones that are loose; those suck. But this one seems quite okay. There is quite an issue with gapage there. I don't remember how he solves it. Oh, that's how he solves it with magic super glue, of course. Uh, Stupid me. Here's the size comparison to forearms, and he's quite well scaled because he's a bit shorter, I think. Uh, Funny enough, uh, I think he also used Venom legs for this one, but I'm not sure. And here's the final result a quite decent looking diamond head. I really like that translucent green. Uh, that's something that Bandai really should have done with the figures. I don't remember any figure having translucent green parts and also the rest of his collection he's a bit ahead of crafty gecko in number of figures made 
but crafty gecko does take longer to make them. It's time for crafty geckos. Uh, most impressive figure and this is pretty much the climax of this video. This is Grey Matter. You might notice something about him. He's small. So as per usual, Thinkad, the beginning of pretty much every- Yeah, there you go, Thinkad. He uses Thinkad to design every part of Grey Matter. Head, chest, torso, leg, lower leg, upper arm, lower arm, everything. It's there. Of course, with the usual uh, Financing in Blender, adding the what? What even are these? What? What are these supposed to be? And you can see here that he is 3D printing every piece of the body because this is a completely uncustomized figure. This is a scratch-made figure. And also here you can see um, part of how the articulation is going to work. These are ball bearings, from um, actual ball bearings. And these are neodymium mag magnets. I think they are neodymium. I'm not entirely sure on that. But magnets and bearings. There we go with actual glue that I know about. This is how he attaches the ball bearing to Grammeter's head to build the articulation. Uh, here he is finishing the leg and att attaching it to the body. And you can see it moves. Great. Awesome, just great. I am. Th this left me speechless when I saw it. When I saw it, uh, it. Wow. I'm going to skip over the painting face, even though that's also magnificent. And there it is. Look how small it is. First of all, just uh, look at your finger, and try to imagine how small this gray matter figure is. Yeah, it's it's minuscule. And here he's on the Lazy Susan, rotating. You can see it's really well painted. Crafty Gecko, I bow down to you. You are amazing. And here comes the size comparison to Hit Blast. He's so tiny. I'm, I believe most of you know how a 6 inch, six inch figure is in your hand. Imagine Cry Matter. Like, that's so tiny. This is great. This is, I think, Crafty Gecko's best work. This is his channel. There you go. Subscribe, blow his channel up. He deserves it. And honestly, so does Dino Plastic. His work may not be as professional as Crafty Gecko's, but it's, his figures are great. He even has, as you can see, Hit Blast from the Carni Tricks. So yeah, go blow his channel up as well. They both deserve it. You guys are great. Thank you for your services. Thank you, Crafty Gecko. Gracias, Dino Plastic. You're all great. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.